That's so cheesy. All right, we are the Tree Stand Cup Holder Group. My name is Kyler Reek. Spencer Newman. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Don't you hate it when your coffee spills while you're deer hunting in your tree stand? Well, we have made a tree stand cup holder. This is our very first model, this is our second model, and this is our third and final model. The problem was um, that people were spilling their coffee in their tree stands while they were hunting deer, and we have created the solution of a tree stand uh, cup holder. All you do is screw it into the tree, set your coffee in it. No more spilling coffee. Correct. So then this is our timeline of the project. So throughout February, if you guys for surely can remember, we did teamwork activities and projects, and then we kind of got with our groups and type of forgot anyways. So in the bottom left is the pictures of us doing our group projects, so like the card pack or the card building. And then towards um, March and through April, we actually started getting in our groups and doing our prototype. We did all of our design work. So we were working hard in our groups, coming up with our ideas, and then um, Late March, early April, we actually had our first prototype made, which was this one right here. And that was 3D printed in the middle school maker space. Mr. Rankin helped us out with that. And our first general thought was, why don't we just put a, a thing on the back that a screw can go into so we can screw it in like this. But the problem was, it was hard to make a size for the screw. And Mr. Prophet, who we actually talked to, was like, you guys are thinking way too hard. Why don't you just make um, a cup holder that slides onto the screw? And so then that's where we came up with our actual, our second model. And so then we have the back piece, and don't mind the damage. We drop tested them on concrete, like extreme drop tests, not just from a tree stand. And so then that's where we came up with this design. So you have the screw, and you screw it into the tree, and then it's just as simple as putting it on top like this. That way you don't have to worry about the screw staying in there, because it's hard to find a screw that would stick in there, because even if it was the perfect size, it would come unlatched. And so then towards April or towards the beginning of May, we worked hard to get a better quality product, which we actually did through our customer discoveries. And we had quite a bit of responses. We'll get to that. And so that's where we came up with our third and final piece. It's actually less dense. It has the honeycomb features on the bottom. And then throughout the sides in the front, it actually has the same design pattern as the second one. It's just a lot more, it's less dense as in like, um, it's not as heavy, I guess. So that way you don't have to have a burden of a pound of whatever in your bag when you're going throughout your tree stand. So... Less dense, but same back design. And then, next slide, Harley. So then the value of our product, it was to provide a simple and easy way to access your cup in a tree stand without having it be spilt or knocked over. And so then it was to keep drinks like water bottles all the way up to Yeti tumblers in your cup without having to worry about the fact of it spilling over. Because we had this other design that there was only one other product like ours out in the market, but it had the flimsy netting. So people would be in their tree stand and they just hang the netting off to the side. But that only fit certain cups, like a normal water bottle size are these. So we're like, all right, we'll make it for people be like that want a bigger, better design, which was a Yeti tumbler. And so then it just it's a simple fit, goes in just like this, actually almost a perfect fit. And so then our next part of it would just be screwing into the tree. And that's where we, we started off with the, uh, we were going to do an arm length wedge, but the wedge of the arm was just like not what we wanted because we'd have to reach over to the arm and get the arm all the way in and it'd just be too much parts. And we were actually looking at... Um, bendable pipelines and I mean it was a good idea at first but we didn't think it would get the job done so that's where we switched into the screw and then the simple part of it is just to keep you from spilling the drink. So then our resources we had a plan and our plan was actually the math formula so like finding inches centimeters in the circumference and radius so we had to find our radius of a normal cup size see what we wanted and then doing the circumference of it to get our round which was actually mostly Harley like majority of that math and work was Harley and then we came up with a prototype. So we started with one. So then that prototype just evolved from there. We worked it later down the road, and then we came up with actual three different prototypes. And the third one's our final piece, which we're pro hoping to improve from there. And then another resource was the 3D printer in the middle school. And that was our main type of help on this project besides our brain. And that was because we were doing all of our work on paper first. And then to finish our product, we went straight to the um, um, printer. And then Mr. Rankin, the man, the myth, and the legend, he did all of our printing, actually, and he stayed late at the middle school to make sure they got done for us so we could come in the next day during 12 o'clock and have a perfect prototype set. And that's him thinking really hard about our product. And then so our team members, we have Harley, who was the creator of the products, like the one who's designing them on the computer with his, what's that software called? Autodesk. Yeah. <coughs> that, what's that called? Autodesk. Autodesk, yeah. And then um, we have math for the parts. So Harley was doing like the circumference and the radius and all that. And then he's a designer and the computer junkie. So he did all that 
hard technical technological stuff that me and Kyler couldn't really figure out since we're more strict to the point and he's computer junkie. And then you have <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm the face of the product and I'm getting it out there. So I was doing the surveys and most of the customer discovery and then searching for parts online, which we go back to the pipeline, the bendable pipeline, and then the screws. And then Kyler's experienced hunter. He knows the problem and he came up with the screw idea because he knows that the arm would be such a pain in the tree stand since you don't have so much, you only have so much space and movement. Go for it, Arlie. So our validation and customer discovery, the main feedback that we got from our customers was either through surveys, face-to-face -face talking to like going some places and talking to tree stand hunters, or just straight up phone calls. That made up the majority of our customer discovery and we ended up talking to around 44 people, as you can see in our graph right up there in the corner. So who we talked to, we talked to a very niche group of hunters and those are the tree stand hunters. That is who this product is designed for. So we talked to a lot of those people because we knew that we'd get the most valuable feedback from them. And then we also talked to friends because Kyler, he has some friends that also tree stand hunt and why not go to them as it is an easy resource and easy place to get some information. And we also talked to some family members because a few of our family members also hunt with tree stands. Here's just a little graph about who supports our idea. Out of 44 people, we had about 13.5% don't see a need for our product. And then we found about 86.4% do see a need for our product. And those questions were just like, we gave them simple questions that they could respond back with feedback, like saying, if we had a cup holder for a tree, would this be a good idea? If so, why? And then if, if you believe it is a good idea, what are your um, choices, durable, dur durability, size, weight? And so then that's how we came up with our prototypes. So sustainability profit in this, what we want to do is to patent it and start selling it. That can help us make some profit in this. And then maybe we could find some local vendors that would like to sell our products on their shelves, which would be really nice. And as a comparison, as Spencer mentioned, there was another cup holder that could be used in a tree stand, but it was just flimsy like wire ring with a mesh bottom that could easily be like torn up in a tree and it's just very, very, very low quality. So we wanted something that would be much, much better than that. So our next steps, so since more than 80% of people liked our design and saw a need for it, we thought that getting our idea out there would be a great next step. So we plan to, if, if possible, and if we get a patent on it, to start selling it in other states, not just to Iowa. So really start a wide range of outreach to see who might even want our products. And as closing, some of our milestones were to get our product nationwide. We want to try to get there, patent it, start selling it, and get in with businesses and move it around to other states. So really just to move it around and see who else could find use with it.